Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over one of these kind of budget friendly wireless Bluetooth enabled shunt monitors for your uh, battery system. This came from Juan Vaughn. It is model KG140F and this is the box that it came in but I'm going to show you what it comes with and then I'm going to walk you through how to set it up so you can be able to monitor your batteries and this is going to be really useful for me which is why I'm using it because I do a lot of battery testing and so I'm hoping this is going to be a good solution for me. Now the first thing that you're going to see here is going to be this monitor. Obviously it's not hooked up to anything but this is going to give you all of the information that you need in terms of your voltage, the amount of amps that you're withdrawing, the amount of amps that you've discharged, your battery capacity, all kinds of good stuff on this little shunt. Now it is flush mount. You can see that it's got a little lip here on the side so you can put this on the wall in an RV and especially RV walls that are about an eighth inch thick. It's actually got a little clip here that will clip into that wall and you don't really have to use any screws but it does come with screw holes if that wall is a little bit thicker than an eighth of an inch. You just simply cut out a rectangle, slide this in it and it'll be flush mount against your wall. So here's the monitor. All right and this is the actual shunt. This is what's going to monitor the input and output of your battery going into your device. So this is kind of the brains of the operation right here. Not pretty, not much to look at but it does have a label for battery negative and load negative. So I'm gonna show you how to hook this up, but it's very, very simple. And you can see it's got a little connection port here, and that's where you're going to connect the actual module for this system. And you got this little uh, data cable that plugs in to the side over here, and then this end simply plugs in to the shunt right here. And now these two are connected. So that's simple as that. And you've got a kind of of a data cable, looks like an old, an old style uh, telephone wire actually. And you're gonna plug it in to the RS-485 link here on the module. And then this is gonna go directly to the back of your display. So now we got all three pieces hooked up. The last thing to do is connect the shunt to the inverter and then to the battery. Now what you're gonna have to supply on your own does not come in the box, is a very, very thin gauge power wire. This is actually, I believe, an 18 gauge wire that I put a ring terminal on and an actual ferrule on the end. This green piece comes in the box and this green piece actually goes into the side of the module here and you're just going to plug it in like so. And what this little 18 gauge wire does is provide power to this system. So I'm going to hook up the end of this 18 gauge small wire directly to the battery that I'm going to be testing. You can connect this power lead to a secondary battery to where you're not actually using the power from the battery that you're testing, but this takes such a minuscule amount of actual power, it doesn't really affect the capacity testing that I'm doing, and it's a little bit easier to set up that way but you will have to supply your own 18 or 20 or 22 gauge wire. Um, it can be very, very small, but this just simply provides power to this system. So this does not come with it. This is the only thing that does not come with this system that you have to, to provide on your own to get this thing up and running. And you also have a temperature sensor that it comes with. And again, it's got that little white, tiny, tiny little connection that's going to plug into one of the ports on the side of this little module here and it's got a temp probe on the end of it. And this is useful, you can actually set this shunt up to do low temp disconnect to actually shut down the battery, but you have to power this thing up using a relay. And I'm not gonna be using a relay on this because that's a little bit more in depth and I don't really need that just for testing out battery capacities and so forth. But it does come with a temperature sensor, which is kind of cool. So we're gonna switch clips here and I'm gonna walk you through the actual setup of this. And then we're going to be actually testing out, make sure it works. I'm going to do a capacity discharge test on a little 50 amp time USB battery that I have to make sure that everything works because I'm going to build a board that this is all going to attach to and the wiring's hopefully going to look a little neater and it's just going to be something that I can move around my shop. If I get a battery, I can just pick up this board with everything on it, put it next to the battery, plug it up to the battery and we'll be good to go. So that's kind of the thought process behind this shunt is to make my testing a little bit easier and more efficient. So, so now you can see why I am out here building a permanent battery testing station because of all this mess. But 
it looks worse than it really is. So I do want to clarify one thing though, is that this monitor actually gets hooked up to the bottom RS-485 display. I believe earlier I said it goes into the RS-485 link, but you plug it into the RS-485 display port here, which is going to power this monitor. But you can see here that it, that it is monitoring the battery, 13.32 volts. We've got zero amps, 99% full. Now, I, this is Bluetooth, so I'm going to show you the app because you can go into the app and set that this is actually a 50 amp, 100 amp, 200 amp battery, whatever you want. You can reset the state of charge to 100%. And that's one of the things on these shunts is that you always want to begin with a 100% charged battery because this shunt doesn't know if it's 20% charged or 100% charged. If you follow the wires around, you can see here's my small little 18 gauge wire that I have hooked up to the module and it's going to the positive post on the battery. I've got my four gauge positive cable wrapping around behind, going into a fuse, going into the positive on the inverter. I've got my negative cable coming off the inverter, going into one side of the shunt, and then on the other side, battery side, I've got another cable going directly to the battery. And that is it. That is how you can actually hook this thing up to monitor the state of charge, the, the amount of discharge that you've had on a battery, that's really all there is to it. But let me get the app up, show you a screen recording of that, and then we'll do a discharge test on this time USB battery, and I can show you how you can monitor the amount of amp hours that you're discharging just to keep a better eye on your battery. Okay, folks, so luckily this is not a beauty contest with this setup, but I wanted to show you how the app kind of coincides with the battery and the inverter and all that good stuff. So you'll download the app. You don't have to input any kind of email address or anything. It just works, which is what I like. But once you download the app, you open it up, and this is going to be the screen that you see. Now, up in the top left, you've got your voltage, and you can click on that, and you can move your voltage range to kind of tighten up the tolerances. And I'm going to move this to say 15 volts max, and we'll do 10 volts minimum. And you can see it kind of tightens up the tolerances on that. And you can do the same for the current. So the max current that I'm gonna have off of this little time USB battery is gonna be 50, 50 amps, because that's what the BMS is capable of. So we're just gonna put 50. And again, that's gonna, that's gonna kind of make that needle a little bit more accurate since you, since you don't have such a huge uh, current window that you can uh, monitor. So that's why you, you might want to change that current. Now for the battery, you can see it's got showing it low 99% uh, preset battery amp hour value. Right now it's showing 100 amp hours. That's not right. This is a 50 amp hour battery. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to put 50 and hit OK showing the battery is now 100% state of charge. And I'm going to go into the current clearing. I'm gonna zero out that current because I don't have anything running. And I'm gonna hit the data clearing button as well because it's showing right now I've got 0.011 amp hours discharge, which I think is because I turned on this inverter, but we're gonna go ahead and clear that too. And it goes down to 0.000. .000. So a lot of pretty useful information on this thing. And if you scroll over, you're going to have graphs once you start using it. Um, and then you can go into settings and all of the prote uh, protection functions that you can use is if you hook up this shunt to a relay. So all of these will only work if you have a relay hooked up to the, to the power side of this whole setup. And I don't have that set up, so I'm not going to get over voltage protection, low voltage protection, overheat protection. I'm not going to get any of that because I don't have a relay hooked up. And... Frankly, I don't want to go through all that mess just for this little battery testing setup. But we're going to go back to the main screen, and I'm going to cut this inverter on, and we'll see how efficient this Gandel is. So, inverter's on, and this 2200 watt inverter only uses 6 watts. These Gandel inverters are my favorite inverters to use. Um, they're very, very high quality for not too high of a price. So these are really, really nice inverters. But anyway, um, let's just start putting a little small load on this so you can kind of see how, how this thing works. So what can we use? I'm going to use this light bulb array, but I'm only going to take out, I'm only going to use probably 150 watts or so. So let's plug this into the inverter. There we go, and you can see right now I'm at 15.7 amps, 204 watts off of those two light bulbs. 
So what this is gonna help me do and help me understand is, am I gonna get the full capacity out of this battery that it traded for? So I'm gonna let this run as is, and when this battery is dead, I can come back and check this app or check this monitor that unfortunately you can't really see right now, but it's gonna tell me the amount of amp hours that I was able to squeeze out of this battery pretty easily. So I think this is gonna be a good setup once I get this all built and, and on a board that what I'm wanting to use, everything's gonna be easy to move and just hook up a battery. Everything's gonna be hooked up for all of my other battery reviews. So I don't have to go through all this spider web mess of, of wires uh, for every single battery. But overall, yeah, I think it's a pretty decent little shunt that the app is pretty user friendly. And again, for 60 bucks, at least it is as of July the 7th. I don't know what it's gonna be on July 9th. So I'm gonna let this whole setup run and I'm gonna come back when this time USB battery is depleted. And hopefully the shunt will let me know if this battery is going to give me at least 50 amp hours. Wow, I was not expecting that result. So I was able to get 58.2 watt hours out of this time USB battery. But the good news is, is that the shunt worked flawlessly and I did have to hook it up to the charger to get the reading off of the shunt because obviously the shunt's powered by the battery. You can hook it up to an external power source if you want, but to me it's easier just to hook it up to the battery you're testing. And so I did have to hook it up. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up the screen recording of the current state of affairs, and I want to take off the negative battery charger and put it behind the shunt, and I wanna see if this little load icon going into the battery is going to change to some type of charging icon, because that would be real helpful too if it would show the amount of, of charge for the battery as well. So we're gonna take this off, and I'm gonna hook it up behind the shunt and this spaghetti tangle mess of wires. And look at that, sweet, it does. It changed over to a little plug receptacle icon and, and showing me my input of power is climbing up. I'm at 80 watts. And I just have this set to the little five amp setting, I believe, five or 10 amp setting on this charger. But that's really cool. So it does go from load to input charge. Of course, depending on how you have your charger set up, if it's behind the shunt, then yes, it will work. Okay, this is good news. So now this means, folks, I'm gonna be able to take all of this mess you see in front of me, and I'm gonna build a little testing board that's just gonna be easy for me to get all my batteries tested cleanly and efficiently. So hopefully I'll be able to make a video on that and how everything's wired and, and uh, looking clean. So yeah, everything, everything worked well uh, on this test. So, you know, for a $60 shunt, it's not bad. But yeah, folks, that's about it for this little test on, on all of this equipment. So until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.